And uh, Dr. McKinnon, of course, Edwards McKinnon is one of the most uh, prominent of the archaeologists who've been working there over the last few decades. He's a good uh, piece of evidence that real archaeologists are born, not made, I think, because he was doing <laughs> archaeology before he was one, <laughs> officially. Um, but so he, he became into archaeology like uh, many other the prominent archaeologists have from another field, but then he's been working in archaeology for the, in Sumatra for the last 40-something years. And uh, he's been a, a discoverer of a huge number of sites all over Sumatra, as well as other parts of Southeast Asia, but Sumatra has always been his main focus of interest. Of course, Sumatra is extremely important in the cultural history of Singapore. Uh, the first rulers, according to the Malayan Isles of the Malays, uh, lived in Singapore. And archaeologically speaking, we have at least found evidence that there have been peoples related to those of Sumatra living here for 700 years. Um, ICES also has been involved to a certain extent in doing some archaeological research in Sumatra, particularly in the Jambi site in the past. And uh, Dr. Edson McKinnon has also worked in Aceh recently, as well as many other sites previously. And we hope that their archaeology unit will continue its series of field schools, possibly in Jambi province next year. So uh, it gives me now great pleasure to uh, give the floor over to Dr. Edwards McKinnon and his talk on ancient Fansur, the case for Pachu, Dr. McKinnon. Uh, thank you very much, John. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <coughs> this is a somewhat heretical subject um, for the simple reason that previously almost everybody has put their money on Baris as the site for Fansur. Um, but having been in and out of Aceh for the last, well, since 1975, actually, when I first came across uh, the site, um, and having spent two years in Aceh with UNDP on the post-tsunami uh, recovery program, I'm now firmly convinced that Panchu, uh, as it's known, is... Uh, although there is not yet tangible evidence to prove my point, uh, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, this is where Fansur was located. So let's go ahead. Um, <coughs> almost everybody has written about uh, Fansur being located in the Baris region of northwest Sumatra. But Baris was known to the Tamils as Barusai or Barusu, and um, almost everybody has ignored the fact that there were uh, two or three names near to modern Banda Aceh, which has been which have been obscured by the modern uh, name of the settlement Lambaru Nijid, which is actually only some twelve kilometres west of the uh, modern city of Banda Aceh. So my hypothesis is that uh, Fansur was actually located in the Bay of Panchu or the Bay of Lambaru Nijid. Well, <coughs> hopefully you're all uh, familiar with uh, <coughs> Sumatra and um, Banda Aceh is right up here at the northern tip of the island. Um, there are actually two sites there. Um, one is called uh, Lamre and the other Fansur. Uh, when I wrote about this in 1988, I associated Lambaro Nujid which is on the Bay of Lambaru or Panchu, with the ancient toponym of Lamri, Lamri, Lamuri, Lamuli. I think I was quite wrong, <clears throat> because since then, since that time, uh, it's become clear that ancient Lamri or Lamuri was almost certainly uh, located in what is now the modern village of Lamre that is on the edge of the Krungraya Bay, some 40 kilometers to the east of modern Banda Aceh. <coughs> so we have two sites here in close proximity, uh, Lamre on the Krungraya and Fansur in Panchu Bay. 
Uh, here is Barus, which is where the camphor came from in medieval pit times. Um, and this is more or less Sumatra as Marco Polo might have known it at the end of the 13th century. Uh, he was familiar with three or four small kingdoms along this eastern coast. <coughs> and he, in the versions I read of his work, he said there are two more kingdoms on the west coast, but I never went near them. <coughs> so if that was the case, when he left to cross the Indian Ocean, he would have left from up here uh, <coughs> in this uh, area of modern Aceh. And it, it actually makes no sense at all to continue down the west coast to go to where Barus is located. <coughs> so um, this is a black and white copy of a Dutch colonial map showing what the area looked like uh, sometime between 1920 and 1940. Uh, Lambaro is late, uh, located here on the bay. Uh, Ujung Panchu or Panchu Headland is next to it and if you go a little bit further west you come to Aceh Head and then the coast turns round south uh, and westward, uh, sorry eastward back down towards Daya and towards uh, other uh, points on the, on the west coast of Aceh and North Sumatra down towards Tapanuli and Barus. But you can see here how close uh, Ujung Panchu is to the uh, mouth of the Achi River up there. And uh, what was, in fact, a former mouth of the Achi River here at Kuala Chankoy and Ulele. <coughs> um, Ujung Panchu, or the name of Panchu, first appears in a European source in 15... 84. <clears throat> Dr. Mongwan very kindly sent me uh, an English translation of a Portuguese text which he published some time ago, uh, Rotiero das Cusas do Achem by Dom João Ribeiro Gaio. And in, that, in the map that he reconstructed from that text, you can see the proximity between the bay <coughs> and the Ache River. And this is Pierre Mongwan's map. Um, the red text uh, <coughs> shows the Bay of Panchu with the island Pulau Ancasa and the Portuguese text points out that in fact you could anchor between uh, the island and the coast. Um, possibly the distance he's got the island offshore is more than it would have been at that point. Um, particularly taking into consideration that there was a beach ridge and mangroves uh, all along the coast from Panchu to what he's got here as Kuala Sabang and all the way up uh, to the, the Muara Ache and further east. <coughs> so this is Pierre's reconstruction of what the area would have looked like at the end of the 16th century. This is a Dutch map from uh, 1924, <coughs> which shows Lambaro as virtually completely surrounded by water and a long beach ridge which came up to uh, near Ulele. Um, and this was one of the former mouths of the, the Aceh River with the major mouth up here somewhere. Uh, this, this one. This is the major mouth of the uh, Aceh River at that time. <coughs> this is what the area looked like after the tsunami of 2004. And you, you can see here in this area uh, the remains of what were fish ponds. These were constructed in the 1990s. Uh, and at the same time, um, all the remaining mangrove was removed. Uh, it was a mistaken event to try to promote uh, 
shoreline fisheries, but, but, but by destroying the mangrove, they also dis, de, uh, destroyed the breeding grounds of the fish. So <coughs> um, the mangrove, of course, allowed the tsunami to come in uh, much more easily than it might have done if there had still been mangrove there. But um, you've got these white bits here on the air satellite picture which show bits of beach ridge reforming due to the currents in the, uh, in the bay. This is the island Pulau Mancasa or Pulau Tuan with some shallows immediately behind it. And this is the rem here, uh, uh, Lampagar, is where the, there's a remains of the beach ridge which uh, sweeps around to join this bit, Lamtengo, uh, where there's a small stream coming in here. Previously, there was a river that uh, entered the bay where there's a right angle in the road, um, which was called the Kuala Panchu. That's now pretty well disappeared underwater uh, at uh, high tide. Back in 1998, <coughs> it became clear to me that forces greater than just wind and tides were at work in the Lambaro area. Because the whole area was seemingly sinking beneath the waves and it's, uh, it's now become clear that the, between the two ends of the Sumatra fault line, one of which enters the sea at uh, Lok Panchu, Lambaro, and one in the Krung Raya, the whole and uh, the whole coast of Aceh is gradually sinking uh, and being submerged. Moreover, nowadays we now know that there were a whole series of major seismic events um, prior to the earthquake and tsunami of 2004. Uh, there is scientific research that tells us that we um, there were two major events, one in 1390 and a second in 1450, which would have affected what was Panchu. But there are, since then, there have been other major quakes and tsunamis in 1833, in 1936, and of course, the horrendous event of December 26, 2004. So over the centuries, earthquakes and tsunamis have had a major impact on coastal settlement in this region. And this is the Sumatra fault line, how it bifurcates in the Aceh Valley, with one bit coming up, the, the, the lines on the map are not entirely accurate, but uh, the bit that goes out on the left is the edge, uh, end of the fault line that goes out through the Bay of Panchu, and the one on the right is the line that goes out through the Krung Raya Bay, and the whole coastline in between them is gradually sinking, I'm told, at a rate of about two centimeters a year, which in uh, geological terms is actually quite fast. <coughs> if we go back to the Arab texts of the ninth century, uh, they tell us that Kam for Kapur Fansuri, or the Kam for Fansur, uh, was found on this coast, and this undoubtedly came from Baris, uh, the region uh, around the Bay of Tapanuli in northern Sumatra, and it was known to Tamil merchants in ancient times as Varusai or Varusu. Uh, Tamil inscription was found at a site called Lobotur um, back in the mid-19th century, and uh, this is an inscription which dates to 1080 of our common era, or 1010 Saka, and was erected by a guild of uh, Tamil merchants who called themselves the, the 500 from a thousand directions. <coughs> and these are some shots of Barus, what it looks like um, <coughs> in, at the modern time. A picture of the camphor tree uh, which is becoming extremely rare, Dryobalanops aromatica, which provides camphor in its bark, uh, in its stems and branches. And uh, a picture of an Arab Dao, as it might have been sailing the seas of 
Southeast Asia in the, in the ninth century. Now, if we go to Tibet, who has written extensively on Arab sources in Southeast Asia, he said that Fansur was a name found in the literature of several races <coughs> excuse me, from the 8th century to about 1430. So there seems to be no reason to doubt that it's a genuine name. There's no reason to doubt that Fansur existed. Nevertheless, it seems extremely likely that Fansur was not Barus or Barasu, but a separate toponym and in a different location. And I'll come back to this point later on. <coughs> Despite the statement by an, an eminent geographer, there has been an academic tendency to equate Fansu with Barus. <coughs> if we go to the Ajaib al-Hind, which is an Arab source of around about 1,000 of a common era, there's a reference to a name called Nulubilenk, and a story that sailors who were shipwrecked near Fansur were able to walk uh, from there to Lamri. Now it seems to me that uh, it's highly unlikely that if anybody had been shipwrecked in Baris, which is some 500 kilometers to the southeast, that they would have ever survived <coughs> wild beasts or cannibals or disease and been able to make it all the way up the coast to Achebasa and to Lamri. Whereas the difference between Lamre and what I say now is Panchua is, is probably only about 50 kilometers. Uh, we do have a little archaeological evidence of pre-Sultanate settlement in Aceh. Uh, this head of a bodhisattva was recovered from an unknown provenance in, in Aceh in the late 19th century, which suggests uh, a pre-Islamic Buddhist presence in Aceh, um, probably around about the 11th century. And in the last few years, we've discovered no less than about six uh, habitation sites which can be dated to the pre-Sultanate period, despite the fact that there is a lot of coastal uh, disappearance in the meantime. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, Marco Polo, who reputedly spent six months in Sumatra waiting for the monsoons in uh, 1292, described six countries which he said were Dragoian, possibly Tamiang, Perlak, Pasay, Padilla, Lamri, and Fansur as all being uh, polities on that northern part of Sumatra. He says specifically that he did not visit two other countries which were on the other or western side of the, the island. So it makes sense that if he took off for Sri Lanka and India, he took off from what is now round about Banda Aceh. So to go back to the map, uh, Marco Polo would have left Sumatra from this top left hand corner where he, he refers to two polities, Lamri or Lamuri and uh, Fansur. And he mentions an island, Gamispola, off the coast of Aceh. Well, the, <coughs> there are several islands up there, the largest of which is um, Bulaway, 